Today, I'm going to show you a DaVinci Resolve plugin that makes animated zooms incredibly easy to create. No keyframes needed and real-time motion blur. This tool comes free inside of Editor Collection Lite and also has a paid version inside of the Editor Collection Pack. The tool is called Wib Zoom and lets you do anything from a standard punch-in to an animated punch-in, multi-point animations, and for most people, it replaces dynamic zoom entirely. In this video, I'm going to be using the paid version of the tool, but I'll let you know when we come across a paid feature and everything else is going to work in the free version. Now, now for adding in this tool, we have two different versions available. We have the effect version and the generator version. The effect version is going to apply to the clip itself and is good if you just want to use it once, while the generator version is good because it works as an adjustment clip, so you can use it over multiple clips, it's easy to see on the timeline, you can copy and paste it, and with the generator clip you can use that multi-point animation feature. So I'm going to be using the generator version in this tutorial, but follow along however you want. So in the effects tab under generators we have the editor collection tools, and I'm going to grab Wib zoom and drop this above my first clip. And the first thing that we want to talk about is how we can use this to create dynamic zoom animations and how we can use it to replace the dynamic zoom features inside of DaVinci Resolve. There are two main things that you would want to use dynamic zoom for in DaVinci Resolve. And the first one is just a subtle zoom in animation over the course of a clip. And the other one might be you want to stay zoomed in and then like scroll down to reveal some more information um, on your image. Wib zoom can do all of this and actually adds in some more functionality and makes certain things easier. So by default, it's in the standard mode, which means it's going to zoom in. And then once we get to the end, it's going to zoom out. What we want to do first is set this to be locked. And what this does is removes all of the animation and just keeps it at whatever size we set it to. So I'm going to bring the size out and set this to be 1. And now what we want to use is this continued zoom. So if I drag this up, what it's going to do is create just a subtle zoom in animation over the duration of the clip. And the really nice thing about this is it's going to keep going at the same speed no matter how long or how short my clip is. So that's nice if you need to reuse the zoom over multiple clips that might not have the same length. So that means you can get the same rate of zoom without having to manually try and figure it out inside of the dynamic zoom menu. Now when using this tool, you want to come down to the bottom left of the viewer, hit this drop down menu, and make sure that the fusion overlay is turned on. That means when I zoom this in a little bit, we can grab this pivot point and we can move it to change where it's actually zooming into. So maybe if I set it right down here, now I have that continued zoom on, so when I hit play, it's just going to zoom into that one little section right down there. And again, if I cut it or cut it in half, it's still going to have that same rate of zoom even though I changed the length of the clip. That is super handy. The other option we have is this duration mode. And what this does is it lets us set a start size and an end size. And it's going to make sure that by the time it gets to the end of the clip, it is at that end size. So when I hit play, you can see it's just going to zoom in across the entire duration. And this already has some easing applied as well, just like you'd find in dynamic zoom. But this levels that up, it has a lot more customization for the easing. First you can set the curve to be linear so that way there's nothing. You can set it to be easing so we have these in and out easing presets and I just like the default that it's set to. But we can also set this to be custom and add in our own easing curve, something you can't do with dynamic zoom. But anyways with this we can change the start size as well as unlink the pivots so that way at the beginning I can zoom this in and change the start pivot. So that way I can move both of these sections around just like we would in the dynamic zoom menu and we have the easing already applied. Okay, so that's really cool. Let's get into the fun part about using the standard mode of Wib zoom. And this is what I use it for most of the time making these tutorials so I can zoom into a section on my, on my screen so that way people can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. So on this tutorial footage, let's say I wanna zoom up to the inspector. I'm gonna grab Wib zoom and drop this down and right away it's gonna zoom in so I could grab this pivot point and move it up to the top right. And it's just a little tip, if we want to go to the top right, we can type in 1, press tab, and type in 1. So it sets the X and Y to be 1-1, one, one, which is the top right of the screen. Um, for the X, 0 is the left side, and for the Y, 0 is the bottom. So if I type 0, 0, it's going to put it down in the bottom left corner. So that just makes it easy to get it exactly where you want to go. But now this thing's going to zoom in, and then it's going to rest there until the end of the clip. And then once it reaches that, it's going to zoom back out. Now we have a lot of settings to customize. So for example, we can change the start size, the end size, just like we did last time. And we can even unlink these pivots, so that way we have it move across the screen. And then we can also do something like add a continued zoom. So that means it's going to zoom into its section, and then it's just going to have a slight zoom in as it continues and then it's going to animate all that off at the end. And I can also make this continued zoom negative, so that way when it zooms in, it'll start slightly zooming out. Um, but I like to kind of keep the momentum going and keep it moving forward. Okay, and one of the most powerful parts about this tool is the Anim Engine, and that's something found in most of the Editor Collection tools. 
This lets us customize everything about the animation without having to use any keyframes. So right away, we can choose whether it animates in and out. So if I turn off the out animation, that means it zooms in, but does not zoom out at the end. And then I can also change how long the animations take with these sliders. So by default, it's set to a second, but I could type in two, so that way it takes two seconds to animate on, and then it's gonna take two seconds to animate off at the end. And all of this updates dynamically if I change how long the clip is. So it'll zoom out at the end, just like so. Now, if I wanna get really fancy, I could set this to be a custom. So that means it's gonna take two seconds to animate in at the beginning, and then at the end, it's only gonna take a second to animate off. So you can totally customize this, and there's not really any compromises as compared to using keyframes. But there's a ton of benefits since you don't need to finally move them around, and it automatically retimes it if you change the length of the clip. The other thing we have are these anim offset controls, and these don't really come into play with a generator effect, but if I type in one, so one second, it, what it's gonna do is wait one second before it zooms in, and then it'll start the animation, and same thing at the end. This is really nice when you're working with the effect version. So let's say I put it on this clip, I could tell it to wait 10 seconds before it zooms in, so it's gonna wait all this time, and then it'll finally zoom in down here. So using the effect version, you're gonna use that anim offset. With the generator version, all you need to do is shift the clip back and forth, and that'll do the exact same thing. Something else really cool about this is these tools have real-time motion blur. So if I bring this up, I like to do 0.4 is my motion blur setting. It's gonna add in motion blur, and it's just gonna look beautiful, silky smooth. All right, so everything that I've talked about at this point is actually in the free version of the tool. It's, it's crazy how powerful it is. This next part, the multi-point animations, is going to be exclusive to the version found in the full version of Editor Collection. Um, so if you guys like this, then definitely pick it up. It'll save you so much time. But anyways, let's say I've zoomed into a section, and now, now that I'm up in the inspector, I want to bring it down to the node graph. So what I'm going to do is split the clip, and then I'm going to come over here just so I can see what the middle of the animation is. I'm going to grab this pivot point and move it down to the node graph. And what I can do here is also change the end size. So if I wanna zoom it in more, I can do that. I can change the animation length. So maybe this is a little bit different. And now the issue is we have a, a jarring cut. So it's gonna zoom out and then it's gonna zoom back in. That's not what we want, that's too easy. So what we're gonna do is press this match button. And what this is gonna do is grab the values inside of the first uh, with zoom tool and make sure that it is gonna be a seamless transition. So if I play it now, it's gonna be zoomed in and then it's gonna go from the inspector down to where those nodes are. And maybe I'm gonna make this animation a bit longer just so it's a little more smooth. Just like that, super cool. And when you're using the system, as long as you still have the out animation turned on, at the end, it's always gonna animate back out to zero. So that way it's, it's completely seamless. There's never gonna be just a jump cut somewhere else. And if there is, that means you probably need to press this match button. But what about if I wanna go back and make a change to this first version of WebZoom? It's actually really easy. So if I come in here and maybe zoom this in a little bit more, when I hit play, that's gonna break the animation. It's gonna zoom out and then pan. So inside of the second version of WebZoom, I can press refresh and that's gonna update it. So when I hit play, it's gonna have that new value and it's gonna work just fine. It's a ton of fun to use this tool. So let's say we do one more. Let's say we split it here and then in the second version, again, we're gonna come in and change where it zooms to. So let's go up um, into the viewer and maybe we'll bring out the end size a little bit. Press refresh to rematch that, and now we have another seamless transition, and then it animates out at the end. The other thing is if you decide to delete one of these clips, or let's say I shift it over, when I press match again or refresh, it's going to recognize that there isn't a version of Web Zoom before that, so that way it'll start at zero and zoom back in. So overall, a really intelligent tool, and it makes adding zoom animations incredibly easy to do. It's just a bonus that this tool has, is it also has a blur. So if I bring up the blur size, and when I hit play, you can see it's gonna slightly go out of focus when it zooms in, so you can kind of get that, that rack focus effect that's kind of popular. So again, super simple to do that. You just have to drag up the slider, and it does all of the calculations in the background to make sure that it looks nice, and it, it lines up with the animation correctly. So as you can see, Web Zoom is a very powerful tool, and if you do any sort of zoom animations like I do in my videos, it's gonna save you hours and hours compared to using keyframes. So if you want to pick up the full version, check out the link down below to do that, and also check out this playlist that includes some of the tutorials for some of the other tools found in the pack, because it doesn't just come with WebZoom. There's a lot of other really powerful stuff. If you guys have any questions, just let me know.